Hello. We're going to go over how to securely allow regular users to create and modify Active Directory user accounts with PowerShell's GIA, or Just Enough Administration. Let's start by configuring a few of the pieces that are required to use GIA. The first GIA role I'm going to create is going to be for our users to create and modify user accounts in Active Directory. In my GIA admin folder, I'm going to create the directory structure and files for a PowerShell module that GIA will use. First, let's go ahead and create a folder for the module called AD User Admin. Then we need to create a PSM1 file under that directory, as well as a module manifest. Here, I have some function text that I want to put into my PSM1 file. It's a function that users will be able to use to create a new user in Active Directory using some defaults. And here is what my PSM1 will look like. Next, we need to create a folder inside our module called Role Capabilities. Now let's go ahead and open the Role Capabilities folder we just created. Now we need to create a Role Capabilities file that will define what commands and functions that users in this role will have access to. Here, I'm using parameter splatting to define the path of my Role Capabilities file. Then, I'm specifying to import the Active Directory PowerShell module, since we will be using some of the commands from that module. Next, for visible commandlets, I'm specifying new AD user, get AD user, set AD user, remove AD user, and convert to secure string. And finally, for visible functions, I'm going to specify the new user function that I showed you earlier so that users will have access to run it. Now let's go ahead and run the code to create the role capabilities file. Now that the file has been created, let's open it in the ISE. Here, you can see all the options that we specified earlier. The next piece we need to configure GIA is to create a PS session configuration file. This file will define the PowerShell endpoint that users will connect to in order to perform the actions they need. Here, I'm using splatting again to define my parameters. The session type is going to be restricted remote server, and I'm setting run as virtual account to true. You will also notice that there is a scripts to process parameter. If we didn't want to put the new user function in the module we just created, we could alternatively add that function to a PS1 script file and save it somewhere on the remote server. Then we would put the path to that PS1 in the scripts to process parameter to load that function into memory when a user connects to this endpoint. And finally, for role definitions, I need to use a hash table to define which users or groups have access to connect to this endpoint and once they are connected, what role capabilities they will have. For this demo, I'm specifying an account called GIA Admin, which will have a role capability of AD User Admin, which we created earlier. Now let's go ahead and create the session configuration file. Next, I'll run test PS session configuration file to verify that the session configuration file contains valid keys and valid values. If everything looks good, it should return true. Now let's open the session configuration file to take a look. You can see that all the values I specified have been configured. Now that we have all the files we need, let's go ahead and set up the new endpoint on the domain controller. First, I'll create a new session to the prod DC server. Next, I need to copy the AD user admin folder to the modules folder on the remote server. Then, I'm going to copy the session configuration file to the root of C on the remote server. Before I create my new endpoint, let's go ahead and run get ps session configuration on the remote server. This will list the default PowerShell endpoints, and we can see the default endpoint that is used when connecting with PowerShell remoting, called Microsoft.PowerShell. Now let's run register ps session configuration and point it to the configuration file that we just copied to the root of C. For name, we'll specify ad user admin, which will end up being the name of this endpoint. If you're running this command remotely like I am, you may get an error here since registering an endpoint will restart the WinRM service, which will close any remote sessions that are currently open. However, if we run get ps session configuration again, you'll see that our new ad user admin endpoint has been created. 
allowing access to the GIA admin account. Now let's go ahead and create a credential object for my GIA admin user and connect to the remote server. You'll notice that for enter PS session, I'm also specifying a configuration name. This is the name of the endpoint that I would like to connect to. Now that I'm connected to the server, if I run get command, you can see that I only have a small subset of commands available to me. There are some default commands that are always available like get command, get help, etc. But there are also the commands and function that I specified in my role capabilities file. I can now run get ad user against the techsnips account or any other account in Active Directory. I can also run the new user function to create a new user account. And finally, I can run set ad user to modify a user account to add some information such as city and state. Next, I want to create another endpoint, except I don't want to give access to the user to create accounts, only modify accounts. I've already changed to my GIA update directory to build my new module. I'm going to go through the same steps as before, but with a few changes. First, let's create the folder structure and files we need for the module. I'm calling this module AD user update. This time when I create my role capabilities file, I'm only going to specify get AD user and set AD user as the visible commandlets. When I open the role capabilities file, you can see the visible commandlets that were specified. Now I'll create a PS session configuration file giving the GIA update user access to the AD user update role. Then I'll test the configuration file to make sure that it is valid. Now let's open it to verify the role definitions. Now we can move on to creating the endpoint. To save time, let's just connect to the remote server and copy the module and session configuration file. When I run get PS session configuration, we can see that I currently have one custom endpoint for my AD user admin. Now let's create a new endpoint called AD user update and point it to the new session configuration file we just created. Let's run get PS session configuration again and now we can see both the AD user admin and AD user update endpoints. Now I'll connect to the new endpoint on the remote server as the GIA update user to try it out. When I run get command, you'll notice that we only have access to get AD user and set AD user. If I try to run the new user command, I get an error because we never added that function to this GIA configuration. However, I can run get ad user to get the new user we just created. And I can also run set ad user to modify the user account and change the city and state to Providence, Rhode Island. 